Hi, this is Asia Now and you're watching the Weekly Wrap. First up in Singapore, a student who dressed up as a killer clown and went around scaring people has apologised after receiving widespread condemnation on social media for his stunt. The 19-year-old made the apology through a video on YouTube on Monday. He also took down both videos of the prank where he was filmed wearing a clown mask and frightening passers-by. The student and his friends who assisted him with the prank were hauled up by the police for questioning. The clown phenomenon is a recent worldwide craze where pranksters dress up as clowns, hide in public areas and terrify people. A rock band made out of eight convicts is trying out a new form of rehabilitation. The convicts who are serving sentences between three months and four years in Bali's Kerobokan prison for drug crimes are using music to advocate a drug-free life. During their debut performance last Saturday in the prison, the group named Antra Bez sang about the perils of narcotics and about life behind bars. The band has released two music videos and is looking for funding to release their album titled Time to Change. Next, in Malaysia, a varsity student, Crystal Chua, who was groped in front of her rented condominium in Kajang, shouted and recorded a live video of the man who touched her inappropriately. Her friend was almost groped as well, but gave chase to the perpetrator. Moments later, the girls related the ordeal in a YouTube video which has gone viral. They received tremendous support from netizens. Chua also lodged a police report. The girls said that they were proud of what they did as it increased public awareness. The mass communication student now keeps a pepper spray in her purse for her own safety. Moving on, Philippines President Rodrigo Duterte released 17 Vietnamese fishermen caught in the waters of Ilocos Sur province as a friendly gesture towards Vietnam. Prior to their release, the province prosecutor accepted the fishermen's story that they were forced to cross into Philippine territory to avoid Typhoon Ferdi. In his speech during the sending off on Wednesday, Duterte credited Vietnam for defeating the United States in the Vietnam War. He added that Filipinos now live in a world with very complicated international relations. Back in Indonesia, at least 21 people have died in a boat accident off the Indonesian coast. The speedboat was carrying 93 Indonesian migrant workers and was returning from Johor Bahru, Malaysia. However, the boat capsized off Nongsa waters in Batam after running into strong waves and a heavy downpour. At least 38 passengers survived while another 34 are still missing. We now head over to Bangkok with our Thailand partner Nation TV for the latest roundup from the northern ASEAN region. Thank you very much, Colin, for your updates. Now let's take a look here in the Northern ASEAN region, starting off with Myanmar. More than 60 Myanmar refugees have returned to their home country after spending decades in Thai refugee camps. A United Nations High Commissioner for Refugee or UNHCR spokesperson said many of the refugees feel encouraged by the reforms in Myanmar and see a better future for themselves and their families back home. Tens of thousands of refugees from Myanmar live on the Thai side. After 2011, several thousand refugees have tried to get back home because of the democratic reform. Over the past decades, Thailand has not given the refugees citizenship but allowed the UNHCR to find a third country for them to resettle. Moving on to the next story, a regional airline based in Singapore has opened new flights to Luang Prabang and Vientiane in Laos. Silk Air, a wholly owned subsidiary of Singapore Airlines, has recently launched its new flights to Laos. The flights will be available three days a week on Mondays, Thursdays and Saturdays, with return flights available on the same day. Silk Air now has flights to 51 destinations in 14 countries. And still with Laos, as the country has added almost 10 kilograms of gold on top of its large Buddhist stupa in the capital Vientiane. This is part of an ongoing restoration project to mark the 450th anniversary of Tat Luang or Grand Stupa. Other restoration works will include paintwork and improvements to the main structure, garden, drainage and electrical system. The stupa was constructed during the ancient Khmer civilization and has been regarded as a country's national symbol. And now on to Vietnam as the largest mobile network operator in the country has donated hundreds of thousands of US dollars to help flood heat areas in the central part of the country. Viettel Group raised funds from its staff totaling 540,000 US dollars for relief efforts 
to be sent to the flood-devastated areas in Vietnam's central provinces. The company's staff all contributed the worth of a day's salary to the charity program. The company also sent more than 100 engineers to fix any problem with mobile network connections in the flooded areas. And on to our last story in Cambodia as the first Prime Minister after Khmer Rouge passed away at the age of 80 on last Saturday. Pen Sovan died at his home battling high blood pressure and diabetes for a long time. The former leader also became paralyzed on the right side of his body after a stroke. Sovan worked as Prime Minister for six months before he was arrested in 1981. At the time, the Hanoi government still controlled Cambodia and he was deported to Hanoi. He was imprisoned for 11 years and also spent time under house arrest. And that's it for this episode of ASEAN Wrap from the Northern ASEAN region. This has been Sathapat Pat Thong and now back to you, KL. Thank you, Bangkok, and thanks for watching. I'm Dina Murad. Have a good day.